Good morning, everybody. This is a video about the October 14th, 2023 new moon in Libra, which I'm sure most of you already know is also an annular solar eclipse. That means that it's that that you're going to see that ring of fire around in the sky because the moon, the dark moon, the new moon. And this is oh, my God, I'm geeking out. This is the perfect time to witness a conjunction happening. If you follow astrology, conjunctions are when two planets combine their energy because they're in such close proximity to each other, at least in terms of how we view them from Earth. The visible view, they line up almost in line with each other. <clears throat> and an annular solar eclipse is the like the iconic image of a conjunction because you'll see two planetary bodies align in the sky clearly they're not next to each other the moon would burn up but but they align from our perspective on earth which is where astrology always makes its its base its ground zero earth from our perspective on earth as we look up in the sky we'll see these two planetary bodies align in the sky and what a perfect iconic image because you can still see the moon very clearly and the sun's ring around it and it's it, it, it's just perfect visualization of how the two have lined up, but they're still separate entities. Beautiful, beautiful snapshot of what a conjunction looks like. Um, so what is an annular eclipse? An annular eclipse is where we have that ring of fire or just the, the ring, the sun's ring, because the moon is, is too far away from Earth at the time of the eclipse to block out our view of the sun entirely which would be called a total eclipse and so because the moon is a little bit farther out right farther away from from earth in terms of our our eyesight we see it as smaller and the sun remains the same size <laughs> so so it 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 doesn't block out the whole sun which actually has a cooler visual effect going on because of that ring around that dark moon. It's just so beautifully beautiful. It's visually beautiful. Of course, in order to witness the eclipse, you have to have special glasses that you wear. You should never look directly at the sun, it could cause major harm or impact. But I gotta tell you, it's a whole heck of a lot of fun. And if you're in the United States, really, we get real lucky this time around. Uh, North America, South America, Central America, all of us get real lucky in that we have like the perfect view of it because to really enjoy a solar eclipse, it's gotta be during the daytime when the sun is out. <clears throat> And it's it's middle of the day for us. It's I think it's between when it, when you do the difference in time zones between nine and twelve. So it's a, we have a really good prime time viewing because it's in hours that most of us are normally awake. So this is very exciting. There's a lot to look forward to, and probably a lot of eclipse parties going around near you. Usually local libraries do this, local science organizations. If you have a planetarium near you, I know I'm located in Austin. I'm sure there's stuff going on um, where they'll have the eyewear for you or special lenses hooked up to telescopes that you can view it through so that you won't hurt your eyes as you watch it. But oh God, how beautiful and how lucky we are to be able to experience it. So in this video, I am going to go through the astrology of this moment and why this is such exceptional energy and then I will break everything down into the specific zodiac signs that are going to be impacted most profoundly by this energy and I will tell you why let's get into it the new moon in Libra happens on October 14th between 11 19 a.m. and 1 p.m. where I am that central time so out on the west coast it's more like 9 10 o'clock in the morning um, what is what okay so let let's go back what does a solar eclipse represent it represents almost like a blacking out of your 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 purpose your soul's mission in life that's what the sun represents it represents everything that you are in the light what you realize what your what you understand how you understand the world around you your purpose your mission that's what your sun represents 
And then we have the moon. And what does the moon represent? It represents, and this is all in astrology, of course, um, it represents our inner selves, our truth, our personal world, those things that even sometimes we have a hard time understanding about ourselves, but that we like to keep more personal, personal and more private. So when the sun and the moon come together, this is called a new moon. And this happens every single month. Beautiful thing because what it represents is sort of a, a washing out of everything that was. And it represents the beginning of a new cycle. So when you look at the cycle of the moon, we think of it as a monthly cycle. And that's true in terms of its phases. But in terms of real like astro um not ast astronomical but astrological cycle the new moon begins something and then it culminates in its corresponding full moon six months later so this new moon is the beginning of a new phase in our lives a new experience that we're about to have this new moon is occurring in libra and libra energy is all about partnership learning how to connect and communicate with especially one other person in a more intimate way to open up your heart and your mind and find balance and harmony between your two energies and so a uh, new moon is really beautiful energy in libra because it is all about two energies harmonizing and becoming one and then six months later when we get to aries season that's when we'll have the libra full moon to expel or let go of any of these additional energies that we've built up along this theme over the past six months that are getting in our way and need to be cleared out so what did we let go of on the full moon in libra in aries season what did we let go of what did we have to purge and maybe what, what was unbalanced in our life and now what have we made space for what will begin fresh not a second chance we're talking about a fresh start a new start so um what does a solar eclipse mean for astrologers not astronomers but astrologers solar eclipse represents almost like a um crisis of ego and when i say crisis i mean that softly in that it blocks out everything that we've seen or think we are to put us into that vulnerable state that we need to be in to grow and learn and expand our minds because unless that happens to us we get stuck in the same old same old same old um, pattern comfort zone and there's something interesting about that with this new moon as well there's lots going on on this new moon that is very special so I'm going to bring that to your attention too so a solar eclipse really always represented to people in the past a, a bad omen or or you know our sun our nurturer our provider because ancient people knew how important the sun was is now being is now being eclipsed it's all of a sudden dark but we now know that it's dark because of the moon right and the moon rules the waters and so in a new moon we are asked to be more intuitive and receive from the dream realms which the moon has access to you could think of the higher ver higher self version of the moon as neptune this is the dream realm this is the ether this is what has never been has never been created and it is the conduit through which our reality expands so a new moon is a very vulnerable time because there is something new coming into our reality that is going to expand us or grow us or ruin us whatever it is it's coming through you could look at a new moon as a portal of sorts of newness that is coming in and the wonderful thing about the energy that the moon and neptune conduct is that it's not evil or good it is just ultimate possibility and what are you going to do with it so it really does say i think to to whittle it down to the simplest terms something that you've not experienced before is about to happen there is something brand new that can expand and change who you are or the way that you saw yourself 
Now let's get into specifics as to how that's going to happen because there's there's aspects to this uh, new moon that even in addition to the solar eclipse that it's causing um, are really going to make it even more profound. This new moon is <laughs> conjunct to the south node and square to Pluto. Okay. So anything that's square to Pluto is exaggerated, it's extremed, it's, ex it's, it's big and it's intentional, it's ferocious and it's primal. That's Pluto energy and a square means there can be some real challenges and conflicts here. However, this Pluto is also square to Mars at the time. And this, this new moon happens at 21 degrees Libra. Mars is already in about eight, nine degrees away in Scorpio at the time, but that still also puts it square to Pluto. Now, Mars square Pluto, let's just do a little side because we need to know this energy is happening while this new moon is happening. So Mars is square to Pluto. That's very hot energy. It's very heated. It's very aggressive. It's very assertive. It's very ambitious energy. Power struggles for dominance are common with this energy. This new moon is also conjunct to the south node, which is all about your past. So this new moon could absolutely and will absolutely bring up different kinds of power struggles and dominance from your past that need to change you, shift you, reshape you, or be put to rest. It's going to bring them up and I'll tell you who it's going to impact most powerfully. So um, this new moon is also in opposition to Chiron. So difficult life lessons um, in order to provide deep healing, especially in relationships because Chiron is 17 degrees Aries now. This new moon is happening at 21 degrees Libra. This puts Chiron in direct opposition while this new moon is square, loosely, yeah, square to Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn and Mars is right there squaring Pluto as well, intensifying it. There could be some real aggressive conflicts that come from having to heal a past. Now, because it's in Chiron, this could also very well be um, physical healing or physical injury, something, an attack that you suffered. Somehow that some, somebody aggressively attacked you and after you maybe injured you, maybe permanently injured you, but definitely there is trauma here. I mean, that south node is saying, this is coming back from our past. Vedic astrology would say that it's past life. There's a lot of past life understandings that you could all of a sudden become aware of that you weren't really consciously aware of because south node in, in vedic astrology is very much it's subconscious this is stuff that you're just naturally good at or you naturally understand because you've lived the life before and you've earned that knowledge in your past life so it's not something that you're consciously aware of versus the north node which you are consciously aware of because it has to do with the choices you've made and what you've built in this in this new reality that you're in in this lifetime but more western astrology would also would also bring in the possibility that it's also about something in your past the past that you have experienced that maybe you've put into your subconscious or you've repressed in a way so this is really tremendous energy that can totally bring out a power struggle or a power conflict, especially an expose of any kind of dark shadowy behavior that was going on behind the scenes that hasn't been confronted. You can't really hide the uglies when it comes out near this solar eclipse. So there's a confrontation there that happens. And in a way it's really good because it's caught, this darkness is caught in this ring of fire as if there is a natural boundary that's gonna hold those demons in order for you to process them and exorcise them. And that's 
really interesting. In other words, it can be quite frightening in that it will expose challenges and conflicts, suffering from the past, but it will also enable you to target them and do away with them. Remember, Chiron is also about healing. Um, but pretty intense energy. I have some stuff written down. The south node, the past comes back, confronting it, clarifying it, and then releasing it. Opposition to Chiron healing, especially from something physical, painful, an injury or attack that you uh, would want to protect others from because Chiron in Aries is very much the hero energy. It's very much, I will never let this happen to another person again. So it is the energy of, um, um, it is the energy of, I want to be sure. So think about something in your life, in your lifetime. If you were attacked by somebody and you had to create a police report about it, or you went to court about it, or maybe you never did and that's always haunted you. You know, it's, it's these issues and these concerns that really could come up right now and be bought to light or if there was a situation it doesn't have to in involve legalities but um this will play out in terms of what can i do what should i have done about some trauma that i may have experienced through a partnership somebody i dated somebody i was married to and and the 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 culmination and the ultimate um pairing off of that energy to get rid of it exercise it cleanse it because if that's been blocking your ability to love or to have intimate partnerships or connections this will all really really demonstrate yourself show itself and hopefully be able to be expelled at this time because this is really time for a new start and a new beginning now um, we're going to go into, at this point, who it's going to most profoundly impact. Oh, I also didn't talk about this. During this time, even though it's not directly connected, during this time, Saturn, Venus is opposite Saturn. And in fact, Venus is going to be opposite Saturn this whole entire week, the, the entire week of, of October 14th. So what does that mean? There's a lot of sadness and being held back. There's a lot of feeling of, I can't enjoy my life. Something about pleasure has been restricted. And this could all play into, remember Venus rules, uh, Venus rules Libra. So um, this could all play into what has restricted you or held you back or what has been holding you back, either because it wasn't confronted or because it wasn't finished up and it wasn't resolved or because something nefarious has still been trying to get at you and it needs to be confronted and like completely cleared away. So ultimately all of that energy will definitely be exposed. And I love the fact that after this new moon is around, I think the 17th that Venus finally comes out of that opposition to Saturn and we're going to feel a huge release of this tension, of this energy, of this restriction. Remember, Venus doesn't just rule. rule it, Venus rules what you desire, what is desirable to you, what you value, value systems as well as money. So if there have been a lot of restrictions here, it could directly be impacting this new start that you really need. And this energy with Pluto is gonna make sure something but pop something explodes something like just the the wall is broken through it, it's relentless energy and it will not stop until the new is created so i mean no better time for a new moon it's just going to be challenging maybe a little bit scary um um and aggressive this aggressive angry energy um makes me think that it could be uh uh, I don't know in a lot of ways exactly what we need to find our strength in who we are again around this time and it's not the best to get into um, um, dominant struggles especially with with people in power um, that's going to be really challenging for them maybe some of them need to be challenged it'll be interesting how this energy plays out on the public political national scale since this eclipse is happening in the united states it's impacting us pri primarily um, and there's been a lot of conflict already arising in the united states with us not being able to work together or get on each other's side, our government really, um, there's going to be some real dominance 
issues and maybe open fights that are demonstrated but in order to show how we are broken and where we need to rebuild so let's get into who this will impact most profoundly and unlike i do in the on the weekly videos um you'll see that I, I will, I'll also give you options, uh, a little bit of information for ascendant and moon sign. So let's get into it. Um, what did I write? A square to Pluto, insistent, ambitious, powerful, profound. You can't ignore it. Something here with power struggles from the past. Whoever needed to hear that. I wrote it down. I wanted to read it to you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about it. Um, Mars is also trying to Saturn. Anything done on this day will be set and will be taken seriously and will play out in the long term. Action will be taken and it will be taken seriously. So that's also something to realize too. This new start ain't joking with nobody. It's square to Pluto. Mars is square to Pluto. Mars is also trying to Saturn. Anything that happens, this new beginning, is 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 going to be the new norm it's going to it's going to it's going to take permanent effect like people will people will take it seriously is all i can say so this new moon <coughs> solar eclipse is happening in the third decan of aries it's happening at 21 i'm sorry the 21 degrees of libra it's happening in libra but of course um Aries is impacted so because Chiron is there so let's talk about it anybody whose natal Sun moon or ascendant is at 20 at or around 21 degrees Libra and I wrote down the dates why I didn't write them down basically between the 11th and the 15th of October if that's your birthday if your natal Sun is there that's your birthday between the 11th and the 15th this natal this is conjuncting your natal sun so what does that mean this is a huge when when this conjuncts your natal sun this is a huge dynamic change to your perspective and purpose in this world that's 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 what's going to shift and you might have a whole new outlook after all of this happens because of how all of this is released now if you know because you're into astrology your natal moon sits at around 21 degrees libra it could be up to 18 degrees it could be up to 23 degrees but around there this is going to dynamically change who you are inside and how you feel about who you are and hopefully because of all this energy it will strengthen you and secure up a certainty and security it will help you find your internal power and help you release any suffering or pain that you've held on to now if this is conjunct your ascendant because your ascendant is between i would say 18 to 23 degrees libra this will dynamically change your social condition how other people see you and how you are able to live out loud it will dynamically change those aspects of your life. So it could even impact eventually success or reputation or just ultimately overall how people look at you or interpret you. So who else is going to be impacted? How else? Now, what I would encourage you to do, if this is your ascendant, we know this is your first house. So that's definitely impacting you, your sense of self, who you are and how other people think of you. That's you, something that will dynamically and prophetically change that. Um, and also allow you a new start, a new sense of certainty. Um, huge impact. So we know that, we know that is your first house if this is Libra ascendant. If it's your sun, I don't know what house your sun is in. I don't know what house your moon is in just by knowing where your sun or moon is. So check your natal chart and you can get them for free in so many different websites. I'm not even gonna plug one specifically here, but you just have to go to a search engine, put in free natal chart, free birth chart, and so many websites do that for free and it's easy to get done. 
So then you'll see, well, what house is my sun in? What house is my moon in? I know my sun is in Libra. I know my moon is in Libra, but what house does it happen in? This is the stage on which all of this will impact. So if you have a son in Libra and this is your, t your son is in your 10th house, this is all about your career and who you are and what your life purpose is as to what you're building out into the world, right? And if it's in your fourth house, it has a dynamic change or reconstruction of your family unit, especially your family from the past since this is conjunct the south node, right? Just even how you see things could be different. So find out if your sun or moon, if it, this is your sun or moon, find out which house this is happening in so you know what part of your life it's going to be impacting. Basically, if it's your ascendant, it's impacting your entire life because this is where you dynamically shift and the way people see you shift completely, completely shifts. Um, and it's interesting because if your ascendant is in Libra, then the ruler of your chart is Venus as well. And Venus is in that opposition to Saturn that has felt restricted, not being able to enjoy life. It's probably been a kind of a tough year for Libra Risings because Venus was in such a long retrograde. It was so challenged and aspected by Uranus for the whole time. This has been a tough year, <laughs> gotta say. It's been a tough year for you, probably financially, definitely socially. And this is when all of this will be released and you'll feel ease and happiness and beauty and maybe self-worth again and that will happen really by from the 14th between the 14th and the 17th the flow will you'll start to feel it the easement come back um now libras of course it's obvious that you are going to be inf impacted the most but what if well who else is going to be impacted most impactfully by this you have cancer and capricorn and aries the cardinal signs because they are either square or in opposition to this uh, new moon and solar eclipse, especially Cancer, Capricorn, Aries that are born respectively between the 11th and 15th of their respective months. Cancer, it would be July, Capricorn, it would be January, and Aries, it would be April, because this is happening really to third decan birthdays that's that's real but but it also will go because it's right on that it's 24 it's 21 degrees the solar eclipse is happening at so that's right on the cusp between the second and third decan that's why i say between maybe even the 10th 11th into the 12th 13th 14th up to the 15th those of you who birthdays around that time cancer capricorn aries and absolutely libra this is going to be impacting you so cancer capricorn this is going to be square to your natal sons if you have that birth those birthdays at that time if you have cancer ascendant be around like between 18 and 23 degrees cancer or 18 to 23 degrees capricorn this is happening square to your ascendant if you have a moon sign between these degrees in your natal chart in cancer or capricorn it is square to this solar eclipse new moon what does a square mean well a square means there's energy that needs to be released so there's going to be a conflict and a confrontation i would think that you guys are really going to have sort of like be profoundly impacted especially those cancers who sit right toward mm, so i'm going to extend it a little bit for cancers because a capricorns are capricorn threes at the end of capricorn season are conjunct to pluto and pluto's pl playing, playing a big role so I would say actually for Cancers and Capricorns, I'm going to extend it all the way through the third decan because of Pluto's influence on you guys. Cancers, Pluto is in opposition to your natal sun. So ultimately, this is going to have a profound impact, especially on conflict and who you and who you butt heads with because it has to happen. This, has, this absolutely has to happen because there's energy that has to be released by this moon in order for you to have a new beginning. And so you could really want to fight for it. You could have this profound energy of, I will not let somebody get in my way. Now, now I, I appreciate that and I think that you have to follow your heart. But be warned, you guys, Capricorn Cancer, of ruthlessness. Because ruthlessness, when you're dealing with Pluto, will always come back and get you 
even if it's in the next life and really you don't want to set yourself up for that so do not let anybody bully you but also make sure you don't let any you don't bully anybody either you know this this will really bring up issues around dominance and and who tried to dominate you or who who harmed you through this sort of um uh, i would say bullying it feels like bullying so those energies will definitely play out um then we have Aries. Aries, uh, if, you're, if your birth date is between the 11th and 15th, your natal sun sits in direct opposition to the solar eclipse new moon. Um, you guys are, it's going to be a powerful release because your natal suns are conjunct to Chiron. So it's really for you about healing, about how can I help? how can i what what action can i take so these injuries don't happen to anybody else or that, that i can share these experiences to kind of give somebody else a new beginning or a new start and never let this happen this is really going to be about healing to you and understanding how you can apply your healing to the help and assistance and opening doors for others um really really beautiful cathartic and healing energy for aries that are have their natal suns between the 11th and the 15th now rising sign and moon sign this turns into how you help the public or how you interact with the public how they see you and what they recognize maybe for the first time ever that you've done and that you've contributed to and not that even that you're searching for recognition or with the moon sign really being able to heal who you are how you feel about yourself and find some semblance of self-worth after confronting these issues that will inevitably come up because your natal suns are also conjunct the north node feeling empowered to move forward in the direction that you want your life to go and really being able to clean out the past and get a fresh start from it that would be aries so there are other signs that are going to be impacted as well leo threes um, if you're Leo's, especially third house, but I would say born around that, born around uh, Leo's would be August 11th to the 15th. This would be your sun sign. If your moon sign is between eight degrees and 23 degrees, Leo, um, it's sextile to this new moon and trying to Chiron. So this is going to open up opportunities, newness and a freshness a restart and a beautiful new energy of balance and happiness especially when it comes to partnership the ability to do the ability to create balance and evenness and harmony beautiful energy because a sextile offers opportunity and that trying to chiron is healing and then we have sagittarians so sagittarians um Sagittarians, uh, your natal suns will be sextile to, I'm sorry. Yeah, will be sextile to the moon, new moon and trying to Chiron as well. So same things for you guys. It's like you're both sitting on the opposite sides of this, of this new moon. Um, so beautiful energy for you guys as well. And then we have, um, so Leo, if this is your ascendant, if, if your ascendant is in Leo, then this new moon is happening in conjunction, um, is, no, I'm sorry, is happening in your third house. If Leo, if you're a Leo rising, this new moon is happening in your third house. If you're a Sagittarius rising, this new moon is happening in your 11th house. So third house has all to do with your education, your communication, how you speak to people, interactions and networking, um, as well as I believe um, could be family, friends, siblings. And then we also have Sagittarius 11th house. This is really going on. If you're Sagittarius rising, this is going on. These are opportunities that are opening up for you when it comes to social aspects, your community, social justice, if, um, 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 public, public awareness to things, even in some ways, popularity. So that's if it's a rising sign, FYI. So, okay, so those are the sextiles. Trines, of course, is gonna be the other air signs. So 
Aquarius, if you were born, I would say, mm, February 11th through the 15th, that's your natal sun. Uh, that's your sun sign. That's your sun sign if you're an Aquarius rising or you have a moon sign between uh, 11 and 15 degree. No, no, no. Uh, 18 and then I would say 18 and 23 degrees. Aquarius, it's this energy, this, this moon is going to be trying to that aspect in your chart and uh similarly same thing for gemini's right gemini's that are born between the 11th and 15th of uh, june or if you have your natal moon or natal ascendant between um uh, w w the, the 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 same the same <laughs> the same i keep repeating myself 18 and 23 degrees um uh gemini this energy is trining your energy so this is going to bring an easement a relaxing and hopefully a healing to an energy and it'll make a new start or a new beginning so much easier for you so if you've had conflict or been worried about some sort of dominance issue bullying or or just imposing energy or something inside of you that has kept you from doing something or getting into a partnership or easing things out working things out this new moon is going to open almost open a doorway for you to help make it not easier but more gentle and ease things in so that you can actually decide to start something new so wow if you are a Gemini rising, this is happening in your fifth house. If you are an Aquarius rising, this is happening in your ninth house. Gemini's, Gemini threes, or Gemini's that were born between the 11th and the 15th, maybe even the 10th to the 15th of June. This is happening in your fifth house. So this has definitely got to do with romance, love, and courage. And you will have the fucking courage and love in your heart to be able to finally move forward. Something to do with that partnership, with that love, with that beautiful, with that beautiful sort of energy this is if you're a gemini rising if you're an aquarius rising it's happening in your ninth house which has to do with world understanding philosophy growth travel this is a very lucky optimistic energy it will help you grow your energy it will help you expand yourself and get out of your norm bring a lot of happiness and optimism to aquarius risings now <clears throat> if your sun sign is there too <clears throat> then it's the same if not then check your natal chart to see Aquarius and Gemini's what house this is playing out in because your natal Sun is still very much going to be trying to this happening which is going to bring an easement and a gentleness and a tenderness and an openness through this energy um, but to see what house that's happening in you would have to check your natal chart and I highly recommend that you do because there's a beautiful blessing here you know, and same thing for Leos and Sagittarius with the sextile. There's a blessing in this motivation and this opportunity that's coming through this new moon. So that's going to bring beautiful energy to your life. Um, by cardinal signs, this is going to bring dynamic change to you, how you see yourself, or and or how the world sees you. Major life changes coming to the cardinal signs especially my Libra brothers and sisters. Um, I, I can't, be, I just, there's just so much going on. Um, that's it. That's it. If you have any questions, please do leave them before, uh, below this comment. I just think that there's a huge impact coming here. Will you, will you, oh, this is what I, what I love about people who watch astrology. They expect it to go like this. Where's my change? When, if you remember, and I've got to remind you guys, how did I open up this video? This is the beginning of a cycle that goes for the next six months. So you're not going to see this. You're going to see this change starting, this momentum, this push. But it's actually over the next six months go into that uh, Aries season in April. So it's between now and April that you're really going to see something kind of manifest and play out um, in, uh, in these energies and in these changes. So it's not this instant thing but it will be this absolutely dynamic 
thing, especially for those of you with that energy conjuncting in Libra, sun, moon, or rising sign, but in different ways, of course. So I love you guys like crazy. I hope this has helped. If anything I've said confused you, please comment below and I will definitely try to respond and clarify. I know sometimes the astrological talk sounds like a different language and when you know the language it's hard to slow down so sometimes I don't realize how confusing I'm being so please do let me know um, though I hope I've 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 made it I've made it um, clearer for you uh, for those of you who are big fans of my videos and you're wondering where's the all uh, this week's uh, predictions for the decans uh, I'm not doing them this week I'm actually going to start um, moving on starting next week and forward back to doing uh, basically what I'm going to do is create an entire all signs video it's going to be uh, one to, it's going to be at least two to three hours long but it's going to have all the 12 signs and I'm, so in other words I'm putting all the zodiac signs on the same weekly schedule instead of having them start on different days it's going to be all 12 zodiac signs from the beginning of the week to the end of the week um, and there will be timestamps for all 12 zodiac signs and of course I'll go over the general energy and the big energy in the beginning for everybody and then I will break that down but if you can imagine that's a lot of work and it's gonna take me this week I gotta take this week off in order to get that video made for the week to follow and that's just how it's going to be I kind of want to proceed that way because then I can come on here I can do dailies again I can do updates like this again it gives me a lot more space to be able to do more with astrology, talk about more ast astrological phenomenon, do more videos specific to sun signs and houses and get deeper into the astrology because I'll just have so much more room when it comes to how many videos I release every week. So yeah, you guys let me know, make suggestions below. I'd love to see what kind of content you, you actually are interested in um, and definitely, uh, reach out to me through the comments below if you have any questions or need any clarification enjoy enjoy responsibly and in and let go like release yourself to the change and the dynamic um, differences that will be coming into your lives via this new moon solar eclipse i love you guys see you in the videos